One of the men shown in the famous waterboarding video joins us next to talk reality, the reality of false answers, the reality of false promises to be waterboarded for charity like Sean Hannity's. But first, I'll count number two story. Tonight's worst persons in the world, the bronze to Harold Hill. I'm sorry, Glenn Beck. His response today to the swine flu, it's a political scam. This could be to move President Obama's health and human services person into the office rapidly. She's supposed to go through more confirmation hearings today, I think. She can be confirmed right out of the gate because of this swine flu. So don't look over here. Look at the swine flu. Look at the swine flu. Look at the swine flu. Do you realize that to be as paranoid as Beck is, you have to be terrified all the time? I mean, the man must be convinced that he is being plotted against by his toothbrush. The runner-up tonight, Boss Limbaugh. Many were offended when he turned the piracy against the ship Mirsk, Alabama into, quote, just imagine the hue and cry had a Republican president ordered the shooting of mm, black teenagers on the high seas. Three teenagers mm, shot at the high seas at the order of mm, President Obama. Little did we know who was offended. Limbaugh has now been called out by the second-in-command aboard the Mirsk, Alabama, Shane Murphy. It feels great to be home, Murphy said, with the exception of Rush Limbaugh, who is trying to make this into a race issue. It's disgusting. It's hate speech. I won't tolerate it. Sail on, sail on, sailor. But our winner, Louis Caldera, the director of the White House Military Office, one-time Secretary of the Army. This morning, dozens of New York City and Jersey City office buildings were evacuated. The occupants sent running into the streets in grievous panic in what was, for a few minutes at least, a chilling flashback to 9-11. The backup Air Force One, trailed by two F-16 fighters, flew low over Manhattan with sharp turns and banks over the Statue of Liberty, over the World Trade Center site. This was quote, pre-planned, pre-coordinated with everyone involved, said an FAA spokesman named Jim Peters. Not, of course, pre-coordinated with everybody in the buildings who thought fighter jets were chasing Air Force One, or more correctly, a jumbo jet, since most people couldn't even see the logo. The New York Police Department later revealed it knew about this, too, but it had been barred by the FAA from warning the public. This nightmare was, according to that FAA spokesman Peters, a military flight over New York to take photos. A photo op. The FAA and the Air Force scared the hell out of thousands of people, a large percentage of them witnesses, even survivors of 9-11. And not only didn't they have the common sense of a four-year-old to warn anybody, but they had the unmitigated, unforgivable gall to order those in the city who did know not to tell anyone for a photo op. An act like that by foreigners would have been met with missiles or at least with charges of terrorism. An act like that by civilians would have led to jail time. Last week, I approved a mission over New York, says Mr. Caldera, the head of the White House military office. I take responsibility for that decision. While federal authorities took the proper steps to notify state and local authorities in New York and New Jersey, it's clear that the mission created confusion and disruption. I apologize and take responsibility for any distress that flight caused. Good. You take responsibility, then resign. We can't trust you. Louis Caldera, hopefully soon to be the former head of the White House Military Office and today's worst person in the world.